In February, much of the U.S. had some abnormally cold weather. We spent almost two weeks below freezing and our coldest temperature was 17 below zero. Before the cold weather hit, I decided to add a little protection for our little fig plant. I already had some straw packed in around it, so I just added some leaves on top. I just kept piling until I thought the pile was big enough. Here's a look at what the fig looked like when I was finished, then it was off to the bananas. I already had a lot of straw and banana leaves on top of the banana plants that I had cut down, but I wanted to add some more protection just to see if I could get them to survive. Even though I've got Musa Bass Jew and Musa Velutina bananas to survive a couple of winters, we've never had a winter like this one. Luckily, we got some snow along with our brutally cold temperatures, and snow can help insulate. I have my doubts that the bananas will survive, but we'll see next month. Indoors, the sweet potato slips are coming right along, and as I mentioned in the last gardening update, we have seven different varieties growing. We also have quite a few seedlings growing now, so let's take a look at those. I got a new light recently, but I don't really want to talk about it too much until I see how it's going to work out. I like what I'm seeing from it so far, but it's still early. Before I start talking about each of these individual plants and what they are, I've had some questions about when to start pepper seedlings and tomato seedlings. For pepper seedlings and eggplant seedlings, I think a safe rule of thumb to go by is eight weeks before your last frost date. And for tomato seedlings, six weeks before your last frost date. I started my peppers and eggplants a little bit earlier than that this year because I wanted to give them an extra head start. Now let's do a rundown of some of the plants we have. The first one in the back left row is Shishido. Right next to Shishido is another sweet pepper called Lesia. Next, we have Mega Gold. I've done videos on some of these pepper varieties, so if I have, I'll put links down below. After Mega Gold are some F3 peppers from our Black Pearl Cross Project. Next is another sweet pepper that's new for us. It's called Blot. On the end is an eggplant called Rosa Bianca. Then we have a hot pepper that we've grown before called Buena Mulata. Next to it is Chinese five color hot pepper. Here's another sweet pepper called Albino Bullnose. That's a dependable one. Jimmy Nardello is one that we grew last year and we really liked it, so we're gonna grow it again. This is another new one for us called Rewa. New Max Big Jim Chili Pepper was another one we grew for the first time last year and we're growing it again. In the next two pots we have some rose cuttings that I took in February and I'm trying to get those to root, just as an experiment. For those of you who have been subscribing for a while, you know we like Oda and grow it almost every year. We usually grow a few ornamental peppers and this is one that we grew for the first time last year and I really like this one. It's called Jigsaw. This is another new one for us called Cubanelle. We always grow a couple of eggplants out in the garden and this is one of my favorite eggplants to eat called Matoyo. Some friends of mine out in Utah gave me the seeds for this one. It's an F2 from a fish pepper crossed with an unknown pepper. They also have a YouTube channel so I'll put a link to their channel down below so you can go check them out. Their names are UT, Angel, and Kiddo. They do most of their gardening in containers and they grow lots of peppers and tomato plants like I do. Here's a look at some fish peppers that we grew one year. They're a hot pepper with variegated foliage. The peppers start out green with streaks of cream color and then slowly transition to oranges and then finally to reds when they're fully ripe. The longer they're on the plant, usually the hotter they get. This is another cross that I got from UT Angel and Kiddo, and it's a lemon spice jalapeno crossed with a corbaki. Here's another little project that popped up in my garden last year. This is an F2 purple flash crossed with an unknown pepper. This is what a purple flash ornamental pepper looks like. I save seeds from this plant, 
and last year I planted some next to the ornamental peppers that we had in a grow bag. Instead of looking like a purple flash pepper, this is what we got. A little green pepper plant with little purple peppers that changed to red. I saved seeds from that. And this year we're going to grow them out and see what we get in the F2 generation. In the next pot we have an ornamental pepper called New Mex Easter and an ahi mango. And these are going to be part of a grafting experiment for me. This is called lemon ice. That's another one that I got from my friends out in Utah. Next to it are some explosive embers with what appears to be an oddball in the middle. Then we have an ahi pineapple with some F4 otocrosses next to it. Here's some eggplants called Rosita. Please keep in mind that not all of these plants will end up out in our garden. Some of them I'm using in experiments and some of them will be given away. In this pot are some peppers called Corbaki and Santa Fe Grande. Here are a couple of very small eggplants called Ping Tung. On the left are some Oda and some Ahi Lemon Peppers and on the right are some more eggplants. Some of you might remember the leaf cuttings that I took from our sundew plant. Well here's one of the little plantlets that I put in the pot with the mother plant. As you can see it's very tiny. Even though it's very small it can still catch fungus gnats. I noticed an animal trail that went from the corner of the shed to the mulch that I have on the banana plants. And to me it looked larger than a vole or a mouse would leave so I suspected we had a rat. I set our small live trap and baited it with peanuts. I checked it just a couple of hours later and sure enough I caught a wood rat. I took it for a little ride and relocated it out in the country. And it didn't waste any time getting the heck out of there. This is something that I got for Christmas. It's a small greenhouse. I've never had any type of greenhouse before, so it'll be interesting to see how this works out for me. It's just a very small one, but I think it'll be interesting to experiment with. I've been experimenting by feeding some freeze-dried blood worms to our sundew plants, and this is a 12-hour time lapse. So far, they're responding pretty well to it. Here's a quick update on the bananas. The 10 day forecast called for no nights below freezing, so I uncovered them. On any nights that it looks like it can freeze, I'll recover them until we reach our last frost date. After looking at them, I'm confident that the Musa Bash Jew are alive. I'm optimistic that the Dwarf Orinoco is alive, and I'm hopeful that the Musa Velutina is alive. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.